Hey friends, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks, back with another week of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So this last week, we introduced you to the book of Acts, which again, it's the Acts of the Apostles, but it is the Acts of the Resurrected Christ through the Holy Ghost and through the lives and ministries of his ordained apostles. And we saw the cool things that Peter and John and others were doing. Well, the church is growing quite a bit. In fact, if you kind of see some numbers right here, you have got Acts chapter 1, verse 15, about 120 disciples. Acts chapter 2 verse 41, after the day of Pentecost took place, about 3,000 souls were baptized. You know, Peter taught so well and they were just like, what should we do? And Peter's like, well, get baptized. And they did, 3,000 of them. You got Acts chapter 4 verse 4, the number of men who again are joining, about 5,000. Then you get Acts chapter 5, this is even after all the craziness of Ananias and Sapphira. It says, believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So this is the early Christian church growth and it's growing and growing. So there's no problems, right? Well, you get into Acts chapter six, you go to verse number one. In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, so it's still growing, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So because the church is growing so much and the leadership is just so spread out, they're missing out on some ministering opportunities. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. It was like, we've got these responsibilities, but we can't come down and do every single little thing. So they need some help. So verse number three, it says, wherefore brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer in the ministry of the word. So they need seven people to help out. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, who we will talk more about tomorrow. Love Stephen. He's a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost. And then you got Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So, to kind of compare that to where we're at today, you've got, of course, the first presidency, okay? And then you've got the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Again, can you imagine every single responsibility of the church falling on the Quorum of the Twelve? Their main responsibility is to go out and preach the gospel and be able to share and to be able to testify of the resurrected Jesus Christ. That's what they were called to do, right? So what do you you get you get seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom full of faith and power and just like then we have the presidency of the 70 today i love you know our article of faith that talks about we believe in the same organization that existed in the primitive church so you've got these apostles and you've got the presidency of the 70 just like that so i love how the organization now that we have is very similar to what we had then so as the church continues to grow you've got additional quorums of the 70 that help build the kingdom. Now, I saw something the other day I thought was interesting because as we've kind of been told in a lot of the Pew research that's out there and other things about churches, it seems like that religiosity is decreasing amongst a lot of people, especially among the youth and young adults out there. I saw this article in the Deseret News last week and I thought it was so cool. Now, the title is The Number of Latter-day Saint Missionaries is Rising Rapidly. Now, one of the reasons that's of such interest to me is we have an 18-year-old son who's getting ready to go on a mission right now. And he's getting ready, getting ready to put in the papers, should be getting a call soon. So anything missionary, you know, all of a sudden perks up and, and uh, gets my attention. But this article is pretty cool. This is Elder Cook, Quentin L. Cook. He said, fewer children are being born today in most countries. And yet, even with fewer available, more are going out. If you look at the youth, their activity rate is higher than it has been. Convert baptisms have also increased, Elder Cook said, up to 25% in the first quarter of 2023 compared to last year. The number of missionaries serving has increased steadily since church president Russell M. Nelson asked young people to go on missions at the April General Conference in 2022. You know, we had COVID and we had the pandemic, which really brought so many things down. President Nelson's like, all right, let's get ourselves back up here and let's get out out there and serve. So we went from 56,000 at the end of 2021 to 68,000 by June 14th, just a few weeks ago of this year. And Elder Cook says, we really do feel like we'll exceed 72,000 by the end of the year. I mean, my son could be one of those. That's the plan. The influx of missionary applications led to a need for more members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles to make mission assignments. This sounds just like what's taking place in the book of Acts. Typically, two apostles sign mission calls weekly, 
But in recent months, as many as four apostles have been making up to 300 calls a week. It's so crazy. One of the things that we've seen, like I said, is that the research out there shows that the religiosity and the activity level amongst youth all across every religion is going down. But what they're finding is in our religion, that's not necessarily the case. The phenomenon church leaders are seeing among young people who are signing up to go on missions is that they are responding in higher numbers and higher percentages than previous generations, Elder Cook said. Then you've got Elder Marcus B. Nash, General 3070, Executive Director of the Missionary Department of the Church. He said this, there's just something going on. I love that. It's like, we don't know. We don't know what's going on, but something is going on. I don't know how to explain it other than the prophet spoke in April of 2022 and this rising generation that he teaches us was held in reserve are responding. He continued, this new manual, Preach My Gospel, second edition, is attuned to this generation and it will help them rise to the great and noble call. Just as a side note, if you haven't taken time to look through the new version of Preach My Gospel, it is way cool. There's some wonderful things out there. Much more updated to the world that we live in right now. Again, the doctrine is still the same, but just some of the procedures and practices, there's some wonderful things out there. So it's so cool to read about a church that is growing and then to be involved in a church that is growing. And I know I gave you a bunch of numbers and it's not about the numbers, I get that. But still, you see the growth out there and you and I get an opportunity to witness the unprecedented explosion in the growth of the church. And hopefully and prayerfully, we get an opportunity to be a part of it. I am grateful for that opportunity. And I hope you and I really take advantage of the opportunity to be involved with that. It's a wonderful thing. And I know that it's true. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. We love that you do that. And please, if you haven't already, check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.